When OS 2 first came out, it didn't find a lot of acceptance nor a lot of support from software developers. But much of that is changing now as the attendees at this OS2 conference here at the San Jose Convention Center are finding out. There is growing software support and increased acceptance among PC users. Today, we'll take a look at OS2 on this edition of the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, and with me today is Greg Kelly of Digivox. And Greg, you have a program called Sound Impression that's on the Correct. computer here. What is Sound Impression? How do you use it? Sound Impression is a desktop recording studio. What we've done is to take the power of a traditional studio and bring it right down to the desktop. Right, what are the things we see on the screen? So what we have here are mixing controls for the different types uh -huh. of audio. Here we have our wave recorder and player, which has 16-track capability. Mm -hmm. This is a MIDI player. And this is a CD player for playing regular music CDs. Right. So, for instance, I can be right. playing CD while I'm working in some other program. Okay, now show me how you can actually pull up a piece of sound and how you'll put all the tracks together and okay. so on. Okay, what we'll do here is we'll go to our mixer uh -huh. and we can have dropped in different tracks that we've previously edited and now we wanted to mix them together. And now I'll play this composition here. We've got a bunch of sound effects. So these are just different together. sound effects that we mixed together. All right, now the point when showing this is that when Sound Impression first came out, it came out to run under Windows. Correct. You have a new version that's going to come out and run under OS 2 version 2.1, and you say it will run better under OS 2 than it does under Windows. I want to ask you why. Well, we're very excited about our OS 2 version. The power of OS 2 with its multitasking capability will give us capabilities that we presently don't have under Windows to accurately synchronize video and sound. Mm -hmm. So really for the multimedia author is the platform they want to use. Okay, today we are going to look at IBM's OS2 operating system to see its features and to help you figure out if it's a platform that makes sense for the kind of work you do. One of the big issues for any operating system is how much support is there out in the software development community. To check out OS2 support, let's go back to that Windows OS2 Expo being held at the San Jose Convention Center. IBM currently lists 1,200 applications developed specifically for OS2, but many of those are aimed at small, vertical markets. One of the first mainstream programs to hop on the OS2 platform is a word processor called Describe. The new Describe 4.0 takes full advantage of OS2's 32-bit architecture. Describe's CEO Alan Katzen says OS2 is a developer's dream. Most um, people who develop OS2 products um, and go onto other platforms and prefer developing under OS2, uh, especially Windows products. Uh, as far as the capabilities of work OS2 and how it benefits us, um, because it's a multi-threaded, multitasking type operating system and now a 32-bit operating system, gives you a lot of power uh, and capabilities that you don't have in other uh, platforms. Other major developers who are now supporting OS2 include WordPerfect, Lotus Development, Computer Associates, Corel, and Micrographics. Their entry into the world of OS2 represents a major breakthrough. There's a real market there. They believe there's a market there, and them coming over, although it's going to give me headaches from a competitive standpoint, it will, it will let, uh, bring some uh, credibility, and that's going to help us as well. Software developers say the key ingredient to increased OS2 application support is going to be better tech support from IBM. From a developer's point of view, it's more pleasurable to program for presentation manager, but there are less tools. Not all the tools in this show will work with OS2, but they certainly all work with Windows. So that's one reason that companies don't go to OS2 because there's a smaller choice for development tools. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Jonelle Patterson. Oh, you got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this hard disk like slides right out and you can pop a new one. You got more bolts to pop. To many PC users, OS2 is just a name, yet to others it's an operating system that provides unmatched power. 
We'll find out what it can do now from, first of all, George Oliver, Manager of Information Technology at the Royal Bank of Canada, John Soyring, IBM's Manager of Independent Software Development, and here to help us understand all of it is Edwin Black, who's the publisher of this new magazine for OS2 types called the OS2 Professional. Edwin, the perception is there's a war out there between IBM and Microsoft, between Windows and OS2, and that Windows 1 and OS2 lost. It's not that easy, is it? No, I think there was a war, and I think the war is over. It ended last uh, fall during Comdex when uh, uh, Windows NT failed to show. Right, right now, uh, OS2 has demonstrated that it has uh, revolutionized personal computing. It is a system that is so revolutionary, it will actually give time back to its users take the frenzy out of personal computing. And I'm speaking of the multitasking. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking of the fact that a, a simple individual can do uh, 10 things at once, mm -hmm. not through his own energies, but through the energies of the computer, mm -hmm. which is why OS2 is known for harnessing the computer and not the operator. <laughs> okay. All right, you got one fan there, John. <laughs> All right, let, let's turn now to take a look. And you're going to show us version 2.1, the newest version of OS2, That's which correct. is just coming out. First of all, what are the differences between 2.1 and 2.0? Well, first of all, in OS2 2.1, we can run some additional applications that we were unable to run in OS2 uh -huh. 2.0. OS2 2.0 was able to run most DOS applications and Windows applications, but there were a few Windows applications we couldn't run, and those were called enhanced mode Windows applications. Yeah. There's a couple of them on this. Yeah system right now that are installed like Wolfram's Mathematica or the OmniPage Professional, which is a scanning application, uh -huh. which are enhanced mode applications, which under OS2 2.1 now are able to run. Okay. In addition, DOS and Windows applications run much faster under this mm -hmm. release of the operating system, and we integrate into the operating system multimedia features, which now will be standard. Okay. We'll get to see that chip. a little bit later on. First yes, of all, just give us a little introduction to this OS2 desktop and some of the things you can do, John. Okay, what many people so far have found very attractive is the ease of use, and many compare this to the Apple Macintosh, and some argue that it's easier to use than the Macintosh uh -huh. because of the, it builds into an object-oriented interface facilities such that a user can manipulate what are viewed to be everyday objects just by directly right, show me what you pointing mean on to the them screen, John. and dragging to them. So what we'll do is... Um, take a look at a folder, for example, we, I've created a folder and called it Computer Chronicles. Uh -huh. It looks like a manila file folder. If I point to it and double click, a program starts up which opens up that folder and in it I have a document called Top Secret. Uh -huh. If I point to this document, I can just double click it. And what happened really underneath the covers is that the computer system knew to go and start a particular editor and load a particular document and it brought it up for me. I didn't have to start deal with an application or deal with any mm -hmm. file systems. The computer handled that for me, and that's the object-oriented nature that makes it easier to use. Uh -huh. What other examples would you have? Now, part of it's direct manipulation also. For example, if I want to move something from a file, I can just take it out of the file folder and move it over. Mm -hmm. Or if I want to file something in a particular document, I just dragged it over. I can also shred it or delete something just by bringing it over to a shredder, mm -hmm. dragging it over and dropping on the shredder, and it'll prompt me in case I didn't do right. that accidentally, but it will now delete it, and it's been deleted from that folder. So those are just some of the basic manipulations where before you might enter through cryptic commands or through menus and having to select from menus to perform an operation. Now you're pointing to something and just dragging and dropping, and people are finding that to be make the system very easy uh -huh. to use. And you can open up uh, DOS applications, Windows applications in here? Absolutely. That's one of the attractive features. We call this the integrating platform because you can take existing DOS applications, existing Windows applications, install them, and, and have the user get additional benefits above running them and beyond could you, could you do that for us? I mean, I see you have one, two, three down there, or you have a uh, window. Yeah, actually, processor. what we have here is we created a document called PC Fit Sales Forecast. Uh -huh. That's another thing you can do is you can put very long names instead of short cryptic right. names that are follow an 8.3 format. And if I, again, if I point and click at this, an existing DOS application, Lotus 123, now is really taking advantage of the object oriented characteristics. I pointed, the system loaded the application, started it, and it loaded a file, which is my forecast file, automatically mm -hmm. into the system. Uh, I'll just shut that one down. And how about a, a Windows example? Okay. A Windows example would be Lotus, Lotus's Ami Pro, uh -huh. which is represented by this icon. Again, pointing and clicking, and yeah. it brings up the document. And, and users get some b benefits in this, more memory space, and the ability to interoperate between DOS applications, Windows applications, and OS2 you applications. You can actually use that principle, you, I think you showed me before, of actually changing the color of your background. Uh, oh, yeah. Your background a lot of people directly. like that. Um, yeah. They get fairly stylish at times. Let's open up this file folder. It has a, a white background or a grayish background. Let's say we don't quite like that and we want to change it to this 
orangish background. You can being drag from and Texas, drop color, basically. Yeah. yeah, this is the color of the the <laughs> University of Texas, right? Yeah. That's an appropriate one. Okay. And it's as simple as that to change yeah. color. You can change fonts just as easily. All right, George, I want to turn to you, and you've got a separate IBM ThinkPad there you're using. You're a user of OS2, and show us some of the features you like about using OS2 versus some of the other platforms. Pretty much the same kind of idea. The, the, in the bank, we have been crippled by DOS in terms of getting business application out the door. We spent more time uh, re-engineering and figuring out memory maps, and, and, mm -hmm. you know, and our network is many thousands of PCs. So it's, it's really important for us to get away from the handicaps of DOS and into the next generation of operating system. And some of the ease of use stuff that John talked yeah. about also uh, impressed us as well. Um, but a lot of the stuff that we're doing is, is actually the inherently underneath the glass is really what we're yeah. after. The wallpaper is yours, by the way. I take it that doesn't yeah, come that, this is a Yeah, this okay. is a standard uh, raw bank uh, wallpaper at the back here. <laughs> okay. uh, what I'd like to show you is basically I'm doing the same thing. I'm bringing up memos. This actual notepad is my notepad. I use this all uh -huh. the time. Again, you can call things the update paper dot, you know, feedback and yeah, call things right. meaningful names. Um, I've also installed the latest CC Mail, and I believe you're getting a... a, a we'll see a full, full look at CC Mail under OS2 later. Basically, yeah. what I'm doing there is directly manipulating that document and saying I want to send it to someone. Up, up comes the, the CC Mail-based application. Automatically, it's attached as, a, as, a, as a, an attached document. I want to send it to myself for the purposes of this demo and basically give it a title and then go off and say, okay, mail that document. So you can imagine the you know the ability to do that is very very um, important for mm -hmm. us because it reduces the amount of time, reduces the training, reduces the complexity of the the, the underlying operating uh -huh. systems. Uh, what I'll show you there is basically that's arrived. There's a new file that arrived. I can double click on that file, bring it up, uh, let people have a look at it. More importantly, the ability to take multiple vendors' products and have them work seamlessly together. All on, on the same All on the same platform. desktop. Yeah. So basically I'm saying here is double click on that attached file. What happens was under the covers the operating system said that is a process, mm -hmm. uh, a word process document. Bring up the word processor. I didn't have to file the document, find right. it in a directory, right. all right. that kind of complexity is basically yeah. hidden from the, the, the viewer. Quickly, George, you have one little neat thing up there. I know it doesn't have much to do with OS2, but you have yeah. a utility up there called the mouse odometer. I know our viewers would like to see. The you mouse odometer is, is a critical app in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, mouse odometer, I'm Canadian, so of course it's in kilometers. Yeah. And you can see that, of course, it's you know, calculating how much uh, distance this mouse is doing over this session. And since January the 10th of this year, it's done 1.618. <laughs> so it's a real busy little mouse there. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Well, at the moment, OS2 is the only 32-bit operating system on the market, but hovering out there somewhere is Windows NT from Microsoft. To find out what NT can do, we went to the Ziff Davis Labs in Foster City, California, where they're beta testing Microsoft's 32-bit platform. The engineers at the ZD Labs are evaluating Windows NT for its potential as an application development platform and for its usability. Labs director Bill McCrone says the standout feature of NT is its connectivity. I mean, we've done things here where we've hooked it up to a Unix server via TCP IP. We've run SNA protocols and hooked it up to our mainframe. Uh, we've had it on a NetWare LAN and had it intercommunicate with all of these things. Uh, more or less transparently. It's not a distributed operating system, but it is a good communicating operating system. The 32-bit architecture of Windows NT makes it similar to IBM's OS2 in multitasking and multi-threading capability. The big difference, though, is NT's ability to run on multiple processors. The lab's test manager, Bob Kane, says this will spawn a whole new class of multiprocessor file servers. Right now, given uh, the state of the 486 and the soon-to-be uh, released Pentium processors from Intel, uh, the R4000 processor from MIPS, the Alpha processor from DEC, uh, that we are going to see a wave of hardware that is just waiting for applications in an operating system to be able to exploit the capabilities. And NT is going to be the operating system across all those platforms that will be able to do that. 
Other advanced features expected in the finished version of Windows NT include the NTFS file system, individualized login capability for workgroup members, and increased power in applications like spreadsheets and CAD programs. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Jonelle Patterson. While Windows NT is still in development, IBM is releasing version 2.1 of OS2, as we mentioned earlier. So let's find out more about what OS2 can do. Joining us now, Carl Wong of Lotus Development. Back with us, John Soyring of IBM, whose proper title should be Director of Software Development Programs. And back with us, Edwin Black of OS2 Professional. Carl, let's turn to you. And Lotus, I guess, is doing a lot uh, supporting OS2 with some of your applications, aren't you? That's right. Uh, we've been shipping uh, OS uh, 123 for OS2 and Freelance for OS2 for a couple of years now. And uh, we'll be also be shipping Ami Pro as well as CC Mail for OS2 in the first quarter of this okay, year. Okay, we saw a little bit of CC Mail running under OS2 before, but show us some of the features of CC Mail, in particular those that come out under OS2 that we wouldn't otherwise sure. see. Sure, what I'll be demonstrating here is CC Mail for the OS2 Workplace Shell. And what we're looking at right now is the CC Mail folder that installs upon the Workplace Shell. Now, instead of having one single exe uh, as we do in other environments, in the Workplace Shell, we've actually taken the functionality of email and broke it out into separate workplace shell uh -huh. objects. So other uh, functionality uh, items that people might be familiar with, such as directories and inboxes, are in the folder. And since they are true workplace shell folders, I can go ahead and just drag and drop them out to the desktop, where I might want to normally have my inbox. Uh -huh. And uh, we can go into the inbox just by double clicking. And here we have our inbox. It's very much like a traditional email system. You can see who the message is from, the date, the size, the subject. To look at a message, we just double click. And here's the actual message window. This happens to be a message from uh, user Denise to uh, myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, it says, asking for some sales forecast figures. Now, I could go ahead and normally reply to the message like I normally would in any other email system. But to take advantage of the workplace shell that IBM has provided us, we can do drag and drop. So I have also to show you something new down here at the bottom, something called the message template object, which uh, works as a template under OS2. And I'll double click to show you here what a message template object can do. In this case, this message template object is pre-addressed to go automatically to the sales group mm -hmm. with a predefined subject. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and reply to uh, Denise for her request for sales figure numbers, I can just go into my OS2 folder on a particular project we might be working on, take that particular file that I'm looking for, and actually drag it on drop and top of the, work, uh, the message template object uh -huh. here. And notice that it's already pre-attached, all ready to go. And it's already pre-addressed to the sales group, the numbers. And because it is a workplace shell object, I can actually go back in here again and do a commonly used text item that I have here, take the message, and send it off. So you can see by having, uh, taking advantage of the workplace shell, we've actually cut down on some of the mm -hmm. user requirements and training. It's that easy to actually create a program. What about multi-threading here? Well, the whole program is full 32-bit th full and fully multi-threaded. I'll show you an example here. Let's go ahead and look at our folder list. And here happens to be a folder here with about 400 messages. If I wanted to copy all those messages to another folder or maybe print them, which is a common uh, uh, user uh -huh. uh, requested feature, we can actually go ahead and take this. I'll just show this by following, dropping that in my follow-up folder here. Notice that it's a little status bar comes up and it tells you it's copying. Because it's fully multi-threaded, under OS2, I can go off and do other things. I'm going to look at my hard drive here. I might go yeah, out copying, yeah. and notice that I'm doing other things. You'll notice it's just chugging away. That's great. And this is something you just would not be able to do under Microsoft Windows. Right. Okay, John, let's turn back to you. And uh, one of the things you can do with OS2 is something you say which is better than QuickTime, better than video for Windows, which you call Ultimotion. Uh, explain what it is and why it's better than, the, than QuickTime. Is okay, that first of all, in addition to being able to run this current 16-bit applications designed for DOS or Windows yeah. 3.1, we built a lot of additional technology into OS2 to enable new applications, the next generation of applications, much like what Carl's been showing. But we've come up with one that IBM currently has in beta test called Multi-Motion multi right. uh, Matinee. And I'm going to give you a little demonstration of it. Before I go into it, what we're going to see on here is very high resolution. The resolution of this is 240 pixels vertically, yeah. 320 horizontally. And that compares to the state of the art today in the industry on PCs of 160 times 120, or four times the density of the mm -hmm. resolution. Also, this has a capability without any hardware assist, not only to play full motion video and the audio, which we'll see very soon and listen to very soon, but also capture in real time. And no other product in the industry do that we're aware of alone. can do that uh -huh. with software alone. 
And this is just an example of the, the quality that you can get. Mm -hmm. And how, how many frames uh, per second can we run through? Now, this is running at 24 frames per second, where the other products in the industry tend to run at about up to 15 frames uh -huh. per second. The other thing that you're seeing is that the, or with a different audio clip, that right. the audio is right in sync with the video. If you had a human speaking, the the words would be coming out in sync with the lips. And why is that? Why can you do that? With OS2, we have a capability called multi-threading, where we, yeah. through the video is on one thread, the audio is on the other thread, and we have items in the operating system allowing us to synchronize yeah. the two threads. Yeah. One of the wraps on OS2, John, is the hardware it takes to support it and run OS2. How much of a problem is that? What do you really need to run OS2 on your PC? Well, OS2 will start off with any 32-bit Intel-compatible processors, like a 386SX or larger. Mm -hmm. It will run with 4 megabytes of memory, but we typically recommend 6 megabytes or more of memory. And the minimum amount of disk space required is about 18 megabytes, though some people have been able to pare that back down to about 12 megabytes. That's comparable to installing DOS, Windows, and some other facilities yeah. in which would take up a comparable amount of space. Yeah. But in this case, you don't need to add DOS or Windows. It's already built into OS 2 version 2.1 as well as 2.0. Right. That's right. Edwin, what do you think? I mean, uh, are we going to see software support like Lotus is obviously providing to OS 2 so that there'll be more of a balance out there in the world between OS 2 and Windows? Or somebody going to win this war? What do you predict now? Well, I think right now uh, there are uh, millions of people who are able to use OS 2 with their existing DOS applications just through a DOS window. I myself use five or six at any given time, mm -hmm. and our cover story this month in OS2 Professional is about that very feature. Uh, the question is whether the explosion of wonderful applications like we've seen here t today is going to occur sooner or later. The fuse has certainly been lit, and whether it's going to be a short, a short fuse or a, or a long fuse is something that really the public is going to see, I think, in 1993. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. Very impressive stuff. That's our look at OS2. Stay tuned now for this week's computer news on Random Access. In the Random Access file this week, Digital Equipment announced a new series of PCs called the DEC PC MT. The new line features high performance graphics technology for multimedia applications. It also takes up less desk space than a standard PC with its micro tower design. Borland plans to bundle its Windows based Quattro Pro and Paradox. The package will be offered for under $200 for a limited time. WordPerfect is shipping WordPerfect for the Macintosh version 2.1.3. The upgrade integrates the word processor with Grammatic 5 and the compression program Stuff It. Canon has cut prices up to 30% on its entire line of bubble jet printers. At the same time, they're offering a $50 rebate on the BJ200 desktop printer till May 31st. Taking a look at the best-selling utility programs, according to Egghead Software, Stacker for DOS and Windows 3.0 is number one on the PC side, while Fun Screensavers from Berkeley Systems are the leading products on the Mac. It's tax time again, and we have a special report from Stuart Chaffee on what the IRS has to say about doing your taxes on your computer. There are many ways to file your tax returns these days. Fill in the forms and mail them, do them on your computer, or just punch in the information directly to the IRS on a touch-tone phone. But using technology to do your taxes doesn't give you an excuse for making mistakes. The taxpayer is always responsible for their own tax return, regardless of what medium that they use, and that's what you're basically doing when, you're, when you sign your return. Um, and when you're, you're, you're talking about the taxware packages, it's still the information that the taxpayer gives to there. But for audit, you're no more or less subject to an audit filing this way than any other way. The IRS is experimenting with electronic means of filing because, like any other organization these days, it's looking for ways to do its work more efficiently. But when you have a hundred million people sending you their paperwork the same night, the challenge is a big one. So the IRS is hoping taxpayers will use computers and telephones, and not just the mail, to file their returns. 
IRS definitely wants uh, taxpayers to use uh, all these different alternatives. We're trying to make it less fearful, more, more comfortable. People are more comfortable with a PC, and, and it's just a, an alternative that an individual could use. Ten million people are expected to file their taxes electronically this year. At the moment, only professional tax preparers are authorized to send your returns directly from their PCs to the IRS. But the Internal Revenue Service is trying other ways to make tax time easier. You can now buy software that lets you do your taxes simply by answering some questions on the new Form 1040 PC. In Ohio, the IRS is now experimenting with telephone filing. You call a toll-free number, and with a touch-tone phone, just enter your wages, deductions, and withholdings. Each year, we try to add either a, an addition to the current program that we have or another alternative. And I do see that the system will be changing as people become more comfortable with PCs and have more, more um, personal computers in their home, become more comfortable with it. I, I see that this is, will be definitely a growing trend. For more information on tax preparation software available, look for the March issue of Home Office Computing or PC World magazines. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Janelle Stelson. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Video cassette copies of this program are available. Computer Chronicles also publishes a companion newsletter containing details on products demonstrated plus background information on program topics. To order a video cassette or a subscription to the newsletter, call 1 800 366 9484 or write Computer Chronicles. Please specify program subject for tapes. All orders include a free software program for auditing software use and information on the definitive guide to keeping your organization's software legal.